Hey everyone, welcome back to the Frank Driscoll Show. I have a special guest, longtime friend Trevor Jones in the house from California. This guy is an absolute bad boy. He is completely dominating his first year in real estate. He did over 400K. He's got absolutely some of the best things I've seen on video. Uh, I'm super excited. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Dude, I'm excited to be here, Frank. Man. I, believe I get to connect with the real Frank Driscoll. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of uh, Zoom. Yeah, no, no, it's great to have you. You know, when I first started the show, you were definitely a guest that I knew that I wanted to have on. Um, man, I, I know you have a great story. We're going to hear that in a moment. Uh, but you're someone that I've been friends with for a long time. And I've really watched your career grow. And I'll be honest, I'm super impressed. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm super excited. It's, it's so fun. So fun to be in this world. <laughs> okay, well, give, give us your background. How did, how did you get in to what you're doing and, and, and kind of go through? I know you've got some interesting stuff to share about Disney as well. Dude, I, like, I've done a whole bunch of things, and a lot of people don't know this, but I was a, a licensed private investigator for 10 years, and that's a terrible job. It looks, dude, it's nothing like, uh, you know, driving Ferraris and stuff. It's a terrible <laughs> job. I did that for 10 years. I learned Spanish. I did a mission for a church. I learned Spanish. I'm taking statements in English and Spanish. Did a tiny bit of surveillance, mostly it's statements and terrible things like that. And then uh, I, I did that while I was going to school. And oddly enough, I went to school, got a degree in business administration, and I did the real estate option. Graduated in 1990. I was doing finance at first. And then I, like, I saw some show on 60 Minutes or something where some dude's driving a Porsche in Beverly Hills selling real estate. I'm like, oh, I want to do that, right? So I get, I get my degree in business real estate in 1990 and did zero with it. Kept being a PI, then I became a photographer. And then I, my, a friend of mine was, was doing wedding videos and I was doing, you know, wedding photography and, um, you know, portrait photography. And I'm like, oh, the video stuff looks cool. And I knew zero, like nothing, nothing about video. And I, I got a hack of a program called After Effects and I started trying to edit videos with After Effects which shows how completely ignorant I was. If anybody's listening knows anything about video or After Effects, After Effects is a graphics program, nothing to do with editing, so that's how ignorant I was. But I, I got Final Cut Pro, I started learning how to edit, and I started, I got a job at a place called Load Media, editing the Reuters feed, the news feed, to be uploaded the next day. And this is, dude, at this point I have like, I got six kids, I'm 38 years old, I'm starting this whole new career, I was making eight bucks an hour working graveyard from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. And it was, it, was, it was pretty brutal. I did that for a few months. And this was like in 1999 or 2000. And then my wife's like, dude, you got to get a real job. And, and so I, was, I learned Final Cut Pro, taught myself that. And there was a, a school in Hollywood. They, they sold film and they taught programs. They hired me to teach Final Cut Pro. And I taught everybody from like these strange backgrounds, held their mice upside down, didn't even know how to use a computer, all the way up to people that were like full-time feature, you know, A-list movie trailer editors would come in and learn how to use Final Cut Pro, the new up and coming program. And so I spent a couple of years doing that. And, and then I'm like, dude, I don't want to, you know how, you know how they say, sometimes the saying is, if you don't know, you teach. Well, it was kind of like that for me a little bit. Because like I really wanted to be doing, I wanted to be editing movies, and so I kind of worked my way up the food chain. And in, in the entertainment industry, if anybody wants to go that direction, it is one hundred percent. What is it, Frank? What do you think it is? How do you how do you move up in the entertainment industry? How do you get a job in the entertainment industry? What's your guess? Who you know? It's a hundred percent who you know to get your foot in the door. And so you got to be nice to everybody. So I was, you know, I I started freelancing as a tech at, at a, a movie trailer house in Hollywood. And then somebody, I made a positive impact on it. I didn't even know who their name was, but they go, oh, this Trevor guy's a nice guy. And he referred me to this other up and coming movie trailer house. And I went over there to interview to just do tech for a day, a little tech support, set him up with Final Cut for a day. And right then and there, I spent two or three hours with Tom, the owner of that company. And he hired me full time on the spot as a tech at a trailer house. I'm like, he's like, how much do you want? Remember, I was going from eight bucks an hour two years ago, right? And I go, 35 bucks an hour? And he's like, done. I'm like, dang, I should have asked for 50, you know? <laughs> what an idiot, yeah. you know? 
but I started there and it was, a, it was a killer job. I was tech boy, moved up to editing. Then I then you know, over the years, I, you know, I changed companies a couple of times and that's the other way you get the big pay raises, you know, in, in most of the world, it's like, Oh, I got a new job. I made it. I make another dollar an hour in entertainment industry. You go from like 90 grand to 130 grand, you know, just by changing companies. And then it just, you know, goes up from there. Once you're an editor, you're working on big feature films. I was working on, I was editing, you know, movie trailers, TV spots, you know, for Fox. Initially, it was mostly Fox stuff. Then I went to um, another couple places and I ended up, the last place I was at for about eight years, eight or nine years, it was almost all Disney and Marvel. It was creative content, you know, basically advertising for Disney and Marvel. So I worked on everything from, you know, Cars 3 to Beauty and the Beast, you know, the, the DVD release of that, but it was mostly the feature films coming out to the, um, the yeah, I think there was the, the Snow White. There's like uh, tons of stuff coming out. And then all the Marvel stuff is what I ended up doing mostly. The last thing I worked on was Thor Ragnarok. And I mean, I literally watched that movie like 18 or 19 times as I went through all the different versions. And it was a great gig, man. I, I liked it. It was great people. I learned a ton. And, but eventually it's like, like, hey, like I'm a, I'm a business guy like you, man. It's like, I, I want to do something that I'm passionate about, but I want to, I want to make money. To, I want, I need to grow. I can't just, if you're not growing, you're dying. And I felt like, okay, I'm probably making more than my producer. And I hit up, hit him up for raise a few years ago, you know, a few years before I got out. I'm like, hey, how about the raise? Like, that's eh, pretty much what we pay editors here. You're, you're kind of maxed out. I'm like, where do I go? I, you know, I don't want to be a producer. They, I don't want, there's, there, there's nowhere to go. And right. so my wife and I, I got, my wife and I both got our licenses and I was starting to do real estate part-time on the side with my wife and she was a full-time-ish agent and she did pretty well. And at one point, um, the, uh, the company I was working at didn't quite shift fast enough. And as things were going more digital online and they were really more in the feature film and like TV spots kind of world, it, things got a little bit slow for a while. So like, hey, Trevor, uh, you're done. Like, sorry, we tried to, tried to adjust everything. They changed everything to try to make it so I could stay because they wanted to keep me, but like, we can't swing it anymore. So, you know, you're done. So I got laid off September 22, 2017. And, and I was like, you know how you... You know how anxiety and excitement are kind of the same emotion? Well, I had that big time. I'm like, yes, because I, I was planning on quitting within six months anyway to do real estate full time because my wife was starting to slay it in real estate. And we said we were a team of 1.2 agents, you know, because Leela is a full time agent and I'm like trying to do stuff at lunch and in between at work and at night and cutting videos and sitting open houses with her on the weekends and just trying to learn the business. And they let me go in the afternoon. I, I get in my car. I, I call the wife. I go, hey, Leela, guess what? Calling her at two in the afternoon is not normal. She's like, you got laid off. Like, ding, ding, ding. Like, these <laughs> women know stuff, bro. You know? <laughs> and she's probably thinking, go get a job in Hollywood again, man. That's where you're making money. And I'm like, dude, this is what we've been waiting for. I got a couple months of severance. Let's just do this thing. Let's go all in. So, so at that point in time, I went just all in in real estate and all in in video. And there's one thing that you and I differ in. And here's the thing. In real estate, everything works, man. If you do it, it works. Like you are a cold calling monster and you can completely slay at cold calling. Personally, I freaking hate cold calling. So I didn't, I did, I did zero cold calling. My wife, you know what, do you know what bold is that Keller Williams has? Yeah. Okay. So Lila did train. bold. And you, what's that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And you do, you do bold. They, they, they had Lila go do bold and she gets on the phone and she's like calling her friends like hi I'm a, and she's like doing the script and they're like Leela are you okay what's the code word you know <laughs> she was like they were they were freaking out thinking something was up with her because she hated it so much she, she couldn't do it we couldn't do it you can you're a rock star I mean you can completely slay it with gold calling and anybody listening to this you want to learn how to do it right man there is no one better than Frank Driscoll on the phone he puts Grant Cardone to shame but Cold calling's great, just not for me. So I went all in on video, and and we had a great year. 2017, I finished the year off, but 2018 was my first year full time in real estate. Had a couple years run up, you know, part time with, and that Lila was doing some of it. But we literally closed almost 400 grand of deals. Our my very first full time year, which was was 2018, and you know we're gonna try to try to double that this year. And the thing is, video is a freaking monster that almost no one is taking advantage of. 85% of internet traffic this year is going to be video, yet 
you think about, okay, who's the, who's the monster slaying it with, with video? And, and my market, everybody that's listening to this, think of the person, the realtor in your market that's slaying it with video. You see every week they're pumping out new content, giving value to everybody. Can you think of a couple people? Can you think of one person? Can you think of anybody that's doing it? The field is like wide open, man. And people need to start taking advantage of it. Anyway, there's well, the long version of my background. Yeah, and, and actually, uh, Trevor and I met. He, he actually did the photography for my wedding with my wife, Heather. So we've known each other for a long time. And I like to say that I was probably his hardest client he's ever had. <laughs> so. Frank, Frank, I heard that. I'm like, Frank, you're getting married to this hot chick. Smile. He's like, I don't smile. <laughs> God, Frank, come on, man. Smile. Look at him now. See, if I could have that face. Yes. Your pictures, your pictures would have been even better. And, and so, keep in mind, he had a reputation of being the best as well, even then. Even for photography, I felt he was the best photographer, no question. So he already had the skills already for shot alignment, placement, lighting, um, you know, shadow, interesting subject, angles. I mean, uh, he, already, he already, I knew he was going to be very successful at anything he did in, in that arena for sure. That's why when you did ultimately get with Disney and started to really cut your teeth, learn Final Cut Pro, move into the next level, and and start to go in to video it was already um already a foregone conclusion that he was going to dominate it was just it was just fun to watch you grow so yeah. tell us a little bit about that um how did it start so you're in real estate you're, you're ready to go what, what 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 would you tell someone that's first trying to get into video where would you even start well there is something i tell people because here's the thing the the average real estate agent is a 54-year-old woman, and she probably doesn't know technology. And I've had people tell me that, oh, Trevor, people see your videos and they're intimidated. They could never do that. You don't need to do that. What's important is that you put out consistent content that gives value to your people. You don't need, let me show you. Here's, here's what I use now, this little camera here but half the videos on my channel were done with a freaking iPhone. You don't need fancy gear. You don't need fancy lighting. All you need is the guts to put yourself on camera. And when you're first starting out, I tell this to everybody, go on Instagram stories. Instagram is a monster right now. Do an Instagram story every day, 15 seconds of value to your clients and make it interesting, make it personal and tell a story. Just jump on Instagram story, boom, send, you're done. You don't need to do a ton of planning. There's no editing, no music, no sound effects. Get comfortable on camera doing that. And then if it's, if it's your jam, you can grow. Like I spend way too much time editing because that's it's still fun for me. I love doing it. it. Real estate's my excuse to do it. But if you're just starting out and it's not your jam, then Instagram, and, and if it is your jam, you still want to be in Instagram stories because that's where the eyeballs are. This business is all about going where the eyeballs are. You know, 50 years ago, People were looking at classified ads in the newspaper. Nobody's doing that now unless they're like 100 and there's no houses listed in there. The eyeballs are on Instagram. Instagram stories is the place to be right now to cut your teeth on video and to stand out. And as you know, in the cold calling world, it's all about consistency. If you go, yeah, I'm going to slay it with cold calling and you get on the phone for eight hours, you know, January 1, then you don't pick up the phone again for six months, dude. That day one did nothing for you. The same with video. People think, well, I made a video. I paid a company $2,000 to make a really cool video showing how awesome I am. That's great for one video, but you got to be pumping out content, you know, every week. And again, it doesn't be talk. It can be 15 seconds, man, and you're done. That's where you start. 15 seconds, something simple. How long does it take, in your opinion, to start getting traction and, and where you're getting leads or prospects or deals from that? It's gonna, t it's gonna take a few months. It's not the, like cold calling is an immediate return. Video is the long game. And there's a couple things we can talk about with that. To it, virtually all of our business in 2018 came from referrals, people that are seeing our videos, our, I'm not sorry, came from our sphere of influence, people that were blasting with our videos on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, I'm sending emails out every week with video content to my database. I got like 16, 1,700 people in our, in our database. Those people, they're seeing our content and they're calling us because we're in front of them all the time. And that is, that's the long game, but I think that's the easier game ultimately because I don't want to be in the phone for three hours a day calling people. I'd rather like, okay, I'll do the slow build and get that. The way to get to 
the way to get it so that you're getting more, a little more immediate business with that is to post it on Facebook and share it in groups. But here's the thing, on Facebook, your video is good for maybe a week if you continue sharing it. And I've gotten like you know 10,000 views on a Facebook video because I shared in groups and you wanna be active in these groups. YouTube is more of a long game because YouTube is a search engine. It is the second biggest search engine on the planet, which is owned by the first largest search engine on the planet, which is? Google. Google, that's right. And when you are trying to find information about a community you wanna live in, a city you wanna live in, you go, hey, Google, I, I, I lived in Simi for 42 years, Simi Valley, you lived there for a few minutes. Um, you know, what's the best reason to move to Simi Valley? Simi Valley, a good place to live. Your videos should come up. They should come up, you know, a week after you upload it to YouTube and they should come up in five years if you're doing things right. Some of the things that I, I have a course that I, that I teach, I show you how to do that. YouTube is the long game where people are gonna see you forever. And the more content you put out, like Gary Vee says, can you put out too much content? No, people, Trevor, you're putting out too much content. I don't, first of all, I don't hear that. And number two, a lot of people are afraid, oh, I can't, I can't put out a video every day because you know, people are thinking it's too much. Dude, you see Grant Cardone, he's, he's like vomiting media on the, <laughs> the internet every day, on Facebook, YouTube, Gary Vee, the same thing. Every piece of content you put out there is another opportunity for people to see you and connect with you and engage with you. So yes, it's a little bit of a long-term game, but that's where the business comes from. So we did, we did Sphere of Influence and Open Houses, and we do video with everything. Here's, a, here's another side tip. It's not just, oh, let me do my, my story once a day, or do, do maybe upload a video to YouTube that's maybe a little more polished once a week. That, you gotta do that. But there's so many ways you can kill it with video. One thing we always do, at the end of every open house, me and the wife, we go through the list, and we go, we pick up our phones, we send, Hey, John and Katrina, it was so cool meeting you at the open house. We look forward to helping you. Um, can't wait to talk to you soon. We'll, we'll talk to you next week. Whatever. We do a quick, you know, 15-second personal video text to everybody that goes to our open houses. And bam, it's like, whoa, nobody does that. You know, most people, they'll, they'll do an open house, and they won't even follow up with anyone. You know this, man. It's, it's follow-up, 100% follow-up. And if you're following up in a different, more advanced way than everybody else, guess what? You're going to stand out. They're the person you're going to use. I mean, we've had, we've had people, well, I remember one open house we did, we're new agents and across the street, a couple doors down was a more experienced agent, right? This couple goes through his open house and then comes to our open house like, oh crap, these, these, these people are probably in his database and we're not going to get them. But we have a very aggressive open house, you know, procedure and we got them and sold them a house where this guy just let him go. I mean, some people they go, oh, I open house, nothing happened. I only had three people and nothing happened. Dude, you have one person who goes to open house, you can sell a house and then they can refer print for your friends and you can keep getting business. It's just about being consistent and following up. Tell us a little bit more about uh, dominating with video. I mean, and also, did we hit the magic number? Or did we get a thousand subscribers yet for that? Because I know you were really close. I have like, so I started a YouTube channel, Dominate with Video, which is for real estate agents to learn how to grow their businesses with video as my wife and I are currently doing. And I just, I started that not that long ago. And I had, as of starting this conversation with Frank, I had 998 subscribers. I'm waiting to get to a thousand, that magic number. And wait, let's see, are we there yet? And nope, 998 still. <laughs> okay, guys, it, if you get a chance, go to Dominate with Video. Please like, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell for him. Uh, those are those are definitely things that are going to help the algorithm to get his him showed more. So, and also the same thing for mine as well. But yeah. so, tell us about that growing that out. The URL, by the way, it's YouTube.com/slash Trevor Jones Creator. Okay. And it'll say dominate with video on the thing. And, and we're going to put a link below as well. So don't worry about it, guys. We're going to have a place where you can go. But tell us, okay? Look, I'm in the process of building that out. Right? I'm going hardcore. And man, it takes, it definitely takes a lot of work and effort and consistency. Oh. Tell, tell us your journey on growing that out and having the, the phenomenal success that you're having from that. Because guys, it's just not subscribers and those things, right? It, he's gaining a lot of momentum and a lot of people, a lot of views. I think he has one that's over 31,000 views. So he, he, he's definitely doing things right and building that. But tell us about that journey and that experience uh, in particular hey, for YouTube. Like, like I think everything you do in life, 
you can take it and spin it and use it in whatever your next adventure is, especially in real estate, you know, like being a private investigator helped me being, you know, being in video obviously helped me become, you know, a better real estate agent. And YouTube is an entirely different beast. Like I know how to edit videos, but, and I, you know, I'd started some YouTube stuff like a long time ago, just messing around. I, you know, I really enjoyed editing. So when I had my six kids at home, I would make videos and upload them to YouTube. Well, I, actually, it was a video podcast, oddly enough. And then I'm like, oh, this was 2006, a year after YouTube came out. And so I'm like, oh, let's, what's this YouTube thing? Let me just throw these videos up there too. So I would do something called Jonescast. So if you go to, I think it's youtube.com slash FCP Ninja, my old family channel, or just Google Jonescast. I think we had like 33 episodes or something up there. Very cool. Just take our week or whatever, and it would be like a vlog of our family, you know, and I should have continued it, man. I'd probably be full-time vlogger right now, but I just stopped. It was like, it took so, so much time, and then the kids got older, and you know what, it's just me and the wife at home, and one kid, but, <laughs> but, but learning how to grow a YouTube channel is an entirely different beast, because there are, there are I don't know, it's like 500 million hours of YouTube watched every day and there's tons of content uploaded every day. There's a ton of competition and people think, dude, is it, is it too late to have success on YouTube? I mean, some people have, some people build their entire real estate careers on, on YouTube alone and it is possible, but it's hard to do. So I don't really watch TV. I don't really do anything fun <laughs> other than work. Cause I mean, work is fun. That's my passion. I'll like, I'll like be up, you know, I was up editing till like midnight last night. And then it's like, okay, for fun, what do you do? I jump on YouTube in bed and I keep learning stuff, man, about how to grow your YouTube channel. So it's about consistently learning. Obviously, one of the best places for real estate agents to do it is, is in my course, Dominate with Video. But there are a ton of creators out there that have amazing content. And I just keep, I keep watching and learning and growing. I mean, it, it comes down to, I mean, some, some of the basic things are learning how to do keyword research. I mean, the one kind of video that every realtor should make, and I'm going to make this video. I, I've kind of done one or another one that's, that's more updated, but there's really only one kind of video you should make, and that is videos that people are searching for. And people are thinking, well, how do I know what somebody is searching for? Well, ask Google and ask YouTube. They'll tell you. I mean, there's, you know, I teach a bunch of that stuff in my course, but here's, here's one tip you can implement this second. Jump on YouTube. Well, the podcast is over. Jump on YouTube. Go in the search bar and type your city name. And when you do that, it's gonna show your city and then it'll show you the 10 most searched things about your city. Make videos around those. People are gonna, that, those are the top 10 things people are searching for and they're gonna find you. There's a bunch of tools that can help you, you know, narrow that down and stuff, but that's the first thing. You want to create videos around what people are searching for. You want to find keywords using that. You wanna put that in your title, in your description, in your tags, and there's, there's a bunch of, tactics you can use to get people to find your videos there's ways to share it so people can find your videos and i just keep learning and growing i mean i dude i like you i pay for courses i pay for coaches i pay for mentors and and it works you do what they say and you just keep growing i just keep learning and growing people think ah i'm just going to figure it out on myself whereas this, there's one thing that frank knows about and that's accountability if you go oh i'm going to google how do i do keyword research i'm going to google how to make better videos how to do lighting you know the beauty of a course is, I mean, you can find most of the things that, that most mentors teach piecemealing it, but you, you don't even know what to look for, number one, to begin with. And number two, you don't have any accountability and you don't have any structure. When you take a course, it's like, oh, do this, 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 and this. Worry about what you're doing today. Don't worry about the, I want to be a, have a million subscribers. Just do this little, these little pieces every day and you're going to grow. The reality is most people won't do it. I mean, I, I've, I've been in this business not nearly as long as probably a lot of you watching this podcast, but most real estate agents don't take the effort to learn and to, and to grow and to get better at their craft. And so at, what's the stat, Frank, after three years, how many real estate agents are still in the business? <laughs> Maybe somewhere between 10 and 20 is what I've seen. So yeah. usually it's are in the yeah. business. 80 to 90% of them bail on the business. Yep. And it's not because there wasn't business. There's plenty of business out there, man. It's like they didn't, they didn't take the steps to get there. It's like, no, you got to do, do something every single day. And with growing your YouTube channel, it's every day being consistent, making every video a little bit better, getting better at the keyword research, getting better at the lighting and the mic. And, and here's one thing that 
is huge. And I just made a video about that. And I've got another one that's coming up on my YouTube channel, um, probably by tomorrow. By the time people lis listen to this, it'll be up there. But one of the biggest things that people are missing in creating video content, especially as real estate agents, is story. People go, oh, I'm going to do a market update. There's this many houses on the market. Here's what interest rates are. Here's uh, how many months supply of inventory. Guess what? Nobody cares about that stuff, right? You think, well, I'm an agent. That's what I should make a video about. And I do. I make those videos. But what I try to do is incorporate a little bit of story so the video is freaking watchable, man. People, people have no attention span. They get bored really quickly unless you're delivering them constant value in an entertaining way. They're, they're done. They're on to the next thing. So you got to learn how to tell a story in your videos and just start doing that. Be a little personal, a little emotional, a little vulnerable, and it's going to go a long way. I mean, my wife and I—we're like we're an open book, and we've had like we've had great things. We got six kids, we got grandkids. We share that. We've had some horrible tragedies in our lives. We're going through a lot of stuff right now, and and we share it. You know, we're okay because a when you share a piece of yourself with somebody, it creates empathy, and when people can empathize with the character in your videos, it's going to be you. It releases a chemical in your brain called oxytocin. And their logic kind of goes out the window. Their rationale goes out the window. They, they connect you with it on an emotional level. People make decisions based on emotion, not on logic. And if you can start creating that empathy in your videos with people and they see you're a real person, it's going to go a long way. I think there is a, a ton of great tips. I love the emphasis on story. Um, I, I love that, that he has a lot of knowledge that he's always researching to get better. And by signing up for his program, it, it is a great place, a starting point that's really going to take you a long way because he's going to keep adding to it with the knowledge that he gets. So uh, it, it's definitely awesome. And it's reinforcing, honestly, a lot of things that I believe in uh, personally about that too. And, and I love the consistency. What was one of your biggest aha moments as an entrepreneur? What, I mean, my, my, <laughs> biggest, my biggest aha moment is that anything is possible if you put in the work. People think that, Oh, well, he's great because, you know, he was born rich or he's great because or she's great because she's beautiful. So she has an Instagram following and she's 22 years old and she has blonde hair and looks great in a bikini. So she's like, I could never do it. Like, dude, it doesn't matter. I see people, no matter what they look like, no matter what their background is, no matter, you know, how much money they came from, they slay it and outdo everybody else. They work. I mean, I see, you see this a lot of time with people that come to this country that from foreign countries, from like, you know, the Soviet Union area, Russia, that they come here and they, they can't even speak English and they slay it because they go, oh, wow, we're in the United States of America. There is incredible opportunity here. All you got to do is work. And look at Gary Vee's story. Look at, you know, Oprah, who was born here but poor and had this horrible background. She's a freaking billionaire. Gary Vee is a multi, multi millionaire that's going to probably buy the New York Jets someday. These are people that started with nothing and became freaking rock stars every one of us can be a freaking rock star even a couple dudes like me and him from simi valley california can become rock stars if we put in the, frank's already a rock star i'm trying to catch up to him but <laughs> all you got to do is put in the freaking work and you can so you can have a seven figure income in real estate like super super doable for virtually everyone on the planet that's willing to do the work yeah, it, it's crazy. I do believe we live in the best time uh, of any time out there to really make it as an entrepreneur. Uh, and on, honestly, there's no excuses. You know, I, I've coached some people that have told me, hey, I have a little bit of an accent. I said, so? I said, that doesn't excuse you from what you have to deliver each week for me, right? And, they, and what do they do? They go out and kill it. Uh, they make tons of money. They're shocked. And I'm like, you're, you, you, you can't use that as an automatic excuse. There's people that will appeal to you. It'll be more enduring. Yeah, there'll be some that don't like you. That's okay. We're going to find the ones that do. But I completely like it. What's something that's non-negotiable for you, right? What's something that doesn't matter you're not, you're not going to make the trade-off for? Uh, well, it, on a daily basis, it's CrossFit gym. Getting like <laughs> I, I got to get out there, man. It's, like, it's kind of my only release. And one, one thing that uh, – as in real estate agents, it can be a little bit lonely. You're like, you're doing your thing. You're out meeting people, but you know, but it's like, you know, you're kind of doing your thing and CrossFit is like this great community. So it's good for community. It's good for staying active. Um, I love that. And one other thing is one other negotiable is, is like always learning, always growing, grow, always learning, always growing to take it to the next level. 
No, perfect. I, I love it. I think those are great answers. I love that uh, where, you, where you're hitting with uh, like-minded individuals on the CrossFit, and that's not a goal. So you're not missing. And, and, and for those that don't know, he's in he's in phenomenal condition. So he always keeps up to What is the greatest failure you've had, and what did it teach you? Dude, I mean, I was laid off in the entertainment industry twice. You know, um, the I, the last place I was at, they laid me off. I mean, it's like whoa. They could have laid other people else, uh, somebody else off, but they laid me off, and so that just made me think. And then, the, and here's a thing that's I don't know if I've told this story public. I think I have told it publicly, but there was, and I'm going to put it in one of my videos. But I got a slap in the face a few years before I, I was laid off. The vice president and my producer took me aside, and they said, "Trevor, you you need to tell more story in your videos." Because I'm like Mr. Fast, I was like the fastest guy there. I'd pump it out. I'd do the the Marvel action, boom, 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 slam, bam stuff. You know, I pump it out with music, sound effects, make it look great. Like Trevor, your stuff needs more story. And I'm like, dude, it's 15 seconds long, with the obligatory intro and the obligatory outro. I got seven or eight seconds. You mean to tell a story in seven or eight seconds? You guys are wrong. It's not. And plus. This is for Disney Channel. These kids are 10 years old. They just want to see Hulk punch Thor in the face. That's it, you know? And they're like, no, Trevor, you need to tell story. And I was arguing with them, man. And that's a huge fail. It's, and like, I think about that all the time now. And so now I'm like, I, I, I miss a boat, you know? I should have listened. That was a, <laughs> I feel like that's a huge failure for me. And now that I've learned it, it's like, okay, I got to make everything about story. You know, I, that was kind of the genesis of, oh, yeah, when you're making videos, it's not just make it pretty. It's not music, sound effects, and all that. Like it's you got to have stories. So that, that was a huge fail for me. Okay, great. I, I agree with you. It's a, it's a perfect point. What drives you to keep going when things get really tough and you just don't feel like doing it? Um, kids and grandkids. I just had my second grandkid like two weeks ago. And just to get to that point where – I can be more mobile, have a team taking care of things. And I just, dude, I just want to be there for my kids and my grandkids. Like, it's killing. I saw, saw my granddaughter for a couple of days, and, and it's been two weeks, and I'm like, I'm going out of my mind. So kids and grandkids and growth. And then I've got this thing where I just, I want to feel, like, even though I've had plenty of successes in my life, I'm still, here's me being a little bit vulnerable. I still feel like I haven't really made it, you know? And I want to get, and I don't know, I don't know if people that are like hard drivers like you and me ever feel like you made it because they say wherever you are, you want, you want to get to the next level, the next level, the next level. But I want to get to the point where I can feel like, okay, I've made it and I can relax. Even though I won't relax, I'll be working till the day, day I die. But you know what I mean? No, totally. I, I think when you're a driven type of individual and for all those walk, uh, watching, man, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm never satisfied. I mean, I see someone I want to get, I want to – be better. I, I want to achieve more. I want to see what I'm capable of. So I totally get it. We want a certain level of success to feel like we've, we're successful or doing things, but then all we do is we know how, I mean, once we hit that stage, we know how really unsuccessful we are and we got to keep pushing. All right. Advice time. If someone's watching this, right, we, we've heard the first, I remember Instagram stories and that. What other thing could you give them? What's, what's one thing you could say right now that just someone watching that, that they need to do every day to get them started in this journey of video. Obviously, besides signing up for your program, which is going to be the number one thing, what's something they can do right now that can really help them move forward and just be doing consistent at it? What's going to be the biggest thing? I mean, here's the thing. You need to schedule it. If you don't schedule it, it's not going to happen if you go. Because in real estate, we're like, oh, everybody else controls your life. You're like, I mean, dude, I'm taking phone calls at 11 o'clock at night from lenders. Yeah, I mean, you know that everybody listening probably knows that the world we live in. It's like, we are always on. I feel like I can never, ever take a break. I'm on vacation answering calls on the phone you know, while you're driving you know, to Utah to go see my grandkids. You're always working. So you need, to, you need to be intentional and schedule it and say, okay, every day, no matter what, at 7 a.m. when nobody's calling me, I'm going to do that. I'm going to create my video content, whether it's Instagram or YouTube or Facebook. It doesn't matter. Wherever, wherever it is. You've got to schedule it and make it a non-negotiable. If you don't, it won't happen. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate your time. Is there any last words that you'd like to get out to our audience? Last words. Oh, the other thing, oh, just about the course real quick. When you take the course, I, I literally took two months off of real estate to put this course together and left my poor wife holding the bag 
on everything. And I wasn't there much for it because I put my heart and soul into this thing. So you take my 20 years of knowledge between, well, even more, 25 years, take photography, in, investigating, which is dealing with people that don't want to talk to you, and all this time I had in the entertainment industry, and all of the continuous studying I still do every single day. You take all of that, and you can just leapfrog the competition by doing it. And besides getting all that content, there's 43 videos with homework in almost every section, every class. You also get access, unlimited access to the private Facebook group for life. That's how it is now. It could be changing, but we have a private Facebook group where I personally answer your questions. My wife, who is killer with story, um, killer with a bunch of stuff, she's in, the, in that group all the time. So you have access to us all the time. You can share your content and learn from the other people in the group that are growing, and, uh, and you're going to slay it. First thing you do, take, watch the videos on my YouTube channel. You get an inkling of, of, of how I do things. And probably, you know, here you get an inkling. I, I'm, I mean, I can tell, but I'm pretty passionate about this stuff. Oh, yeah. And, and it's fun and it's effective. And all you got to do is make the effort. You're going to stand out. And just real quick, you were talking about people that English is as a second language kind of thing. Some of the people, a couple of the girls in my group that are not from here, have thick accents, they're killing it. Their videos are adorable. I love their accents. There's a girl in our market here named Norma. Um, and and I, I tease her because I'm, I'm super direct. I'm kind of a butthead. And I'm, I'm like, I, I was talking to her and her husband. He speaks English you know, as his first language she does. It. And I'm like, I'm like, Norma, you're slaying it. And you don't even speak English. You know? And she does, but she has a thick accent. Just tease her. But she, she kills it. She's adorable. It, it, the, there's literally, like Frank said, there is no excuse to not create video content. One final thing. Everybody says, oh, Trevor, I don't, look, I don't like how I look or how I sound on video. That's super common when a special chicks guys like whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm vain, but, and I'm, I'm super vain because I'm super worried about all this hair that's evaporating. But here's the thing. See how you look, see how I look on camera, how you look on camera. That's exactly how you look on video as well. If you're going to hide in a closet all day and not see people in public, then, then that's a valid excuse. If you're going to go out there and sell houses and be in public, do open houses, you look exactly the same in person as you do on video and you sound exactly the same. So just freaking, get over it and get on video. Well, thank you. I think that's some great advice. Yeah, definitely got to check it out. Check out the links below. You guys will be able to pick that up and I, I highly recommend it. I think it's going to be something that's going to really help your business. Um, you know, I, I always want things that are going to help uh, and, and not just in real estate. And for any of you and our entrepreneurs watching this as well, these are good techniques and, and fundamental practices that you can learn and go forward. Well, thank you so much, Trevor. Really appreciate it as always. Uh, take care, guys. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the button, leave some comments. It really helps us out. Uh, we appreciate it. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.